Hey guys and welcome back. Today I'm going to share with you a recent discussion I had with Mr. Car Guru himself. If you're not already aware, he's the guy who rebuilt a Tesla and by telling you he rebuilt a Tesla, it's not giving him enough credit. He literally took parts from a couple different Teslas and built them almost from the ground up, creating himself his own Tesla. The best part, it only cost him $6,500. Without further ado, here is Mr. Car Guru. All right, Rich, thanks a lot for coming onto the channel. We got a lot of questions to ask you, and I basically wanted to get down to the bottom of a $6,500 Tesla. Yeah, so cool, cool. Paint the picture for everybody watching right now. What was it like when you got the car, when you first saw the car, it was on the back of the truck, it wasn't just as easy as getting off the truck, right? right? It, was, it was a complete nightmare. I mean, essentially, I knew that I wanted uh, a Tesla for cheap. And I figured I went on the auctions I went on Copart and I found it and it was 14 grand. It's just like, who can beat that? So, um, I was thinking about it. I was like, the easiest way to fix a car is you get like 10 bags of rice that I think I saw in one of your videos that you did. You get a whole bunch of bags of rice, just stick it in the car, put the windows up and you wait a few minutes and then, you know, you drive to Tesla. So, yeah, right. uh, you know, that was what was in my head. And then when the car actually showed up and nothing was working and it took an hour and a half to get it off the trailer, that's when I realized, you know what, this was probably not my best idea. Now, I want to parallel that really quick to a few of the situations that I've been in. You know that the tow truck drivers, it's not just like, all right, let's take the car. Some of them uh, are willing to help you out. Some of them are like, no, you need to call two other tow truck guys and a, right. and a this and a that. And you need all these special tools. And I'm not doing it unless you pay me. You had a couple guys, right? Or you needed another truck to take it off. And then the parking brake was stuck. So tell us about that. How'd you get it in its home place? I'm guessing your garage. So what happened was the, uh, the, the tow truck pulled up into my driveway, right? And they said, okay, let's unload this thing. It was like 9.30 at night and the parking brake was stuck. And at this point in time, I didn't even know how the parking brake worked in a, in a Model S. Hmm. Like, well, when I tell you I bought this car and I was so uneducated about it, I couldn't <laughs> emphasize that anymore. I knew nothing about this thing. I knew they were cool. I knew I wanted to look cool driving one. That's about all I knew, right? So what ended up happening was uh, we tried to, to, to push the car off. It didn't work. Um, it just, nothing was working. I literally took my truck and I attached a chain around one of the rear wheels to pull it off the trailer and it still wouldn't come off. So what, what we tend to forget is Tesla's weigh as much as your average SUV does, you know, it's, it's well over 4,000 pounds and it just wasn't coming off at all. You know, my little Tacoma couldn't pull it off. What we ended up doing was. I ended up taking an engine crane and I ended up jacking each individual side of the car, putting underneath wheel dollies out of each individual wheel. You know, the little dollies yeah, that have yeah. four small casters. Definitely. Yep. And even then I still had to use my truck to drag it off the trailer. And I think I ended up going to bed around maybe one o'clock in the morning. Everybody that rebuilds cars has a set of at least, at least one set of wheel dollies, right? Right. Yeah. It's, it's honestly a must. It really is a must. So then it's in your garage and mm -hmm. the story gets better. The windows are all uh, up in the car. Obviously you can't get into the car, right? It just doesn't open up because it was a flood car. So exactly. none of the electronics are working. So what do you do next? So I didn't have anything. I didn't know what to do. I, I just kind of sat there and I was like, well, uh, looks like I have to break the window. So which window did you break? It was the driver's side window. Driver's side, okay. And so you break it, and then this is my favorite part, okay? You open it and you smell, what, you smell something. I smell, I smell water, and it was salt water. Salt water. So it literally smelled like the ocean. And the reason why that was my biggest fear was because it'd be one thing it was fresh water. Fresh water is a piece of cake, as they say. Fresh water, you use the bags of rice, and it's dried in a couple of days, and you call it a day. Unfortunately, salt water is much more corrosive, and it's 10 times worse than fresh water. So as I was going around the car, you know, I was feeling underneath the seats, and the carpet was still, this car sat for months, right? And the carpet was actually still saturated with water. 
not only that, but you know how um, the, essentially once a car becomes totaled, they don't care about it anymore. So they'll take, you know, if the sunroof's open, they'll throw a bag over it and whatever happens, happens. If there's a window down, they'll just leave it out in the field. So what was happening was additional water was coming through the sunroof during the time it was in that field, soaking the car even further. Sounds like a uh, sounds like a classic auction car. Tell me if you feel the same way. You almost play a mental game with yourself when you're bidding on these cars. Right. And you say, okay, it's flooded. So I kind of know the pitfalls of a flooded car. And I'm going to start, and, and forgive me if I'm wrong, but Dolores was your first Tesla purchase, the flooded uh, Tesla that you rebuilt, correct? Absolutely. Okay. So you have in your mind, okay, this is the first Tesla I've dealt with. This is going to be the pitfalls of the flooded car, but then it comes flooded with a salt water flood in a car that is electronic based. Everything's electronic based. Right. And uh, the the part I was going to parallel, see, I've never bought a Tesla or even any salvage electric car, but even the best rebuilt car, which I told you my, my Lincoln, when I got it and I opened the door, first of all, there were a couple things going on. The car looked in this condition. I'll put it up on the screen right here. It looked like, okay, I had it delivered a mile away from my house because, you know, a tow truck driver, driver can come into a neighborhood. Right. And I said, I'm just going to drive it a mile down the road. It's no big deal, right? Yeah. Well, the control arm, an $80 piece, no big deal. A lot of people at home have uh, replaced control arms, was bent. So the wheel was touching the inner fender well. Oh. The Fender was pulled back enough to where it was rubbing against the door. And you get the buyer's remorse immediately. Absolutely. I made the biggest mistake. <laughs> you know what? And I purchased a car before and you don't really think about that. You know, when, mm. you're, when you're bidding on a car at auction, you look at the photos, you look at like the 10 photos they give you. You're like, okay, it's going to need a new rear caliper. It may need a hood. It might need two fenders. Okay, I can deal with that. It looks like the motor's there. I think I can do this. But the problem is, is that you don't take into consideration a smoke smell. And you yeah. and I talked about that before, too. And that does some serious damage to car values. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. And, and like I said, you play this mental game. Oh, I know everything. or I know most of what's going to go on. And then you get it. And you do have to take a step back. And obviously you did this because right. you rebuilt this car. But in the opening segment, I said that uh, Rich rebuilt a Tesla and to, to rebuilding it is not giving you enough credit because you literally built a Tesla from the ground up using parts. They did come from other cars. You started to attack this and um, obviously you pulled apart a saltwater flooded car. And you said, it, how much of the car would you say as far as the electronics go? Every, everything but the electronics and drive system. Um, how much of it was unusable? I never got a chance to actually test the motor itself. The motor is uh, probably the second most high dollar um, uh, item in that car. And I never got a chance to test the motor. And the reason why I didn't test the motor was because if there was water in that motor, I didn't want to apply power to it, number one. Number two, I didn't feel like doing the labor of disassembling a motor that weighs about maybe eight, 900 pounds. So I just sold that motor as is, listed as it was a flooded motor, and I got rid of it immediately. But I had to assume that it wasn't good. The, the battery pack, um, water did get into the battery pack. So uh, there was water intrusion, it was salt water, and there's a video of me actually opening up the battery pack for the first time and just seeing all the modules in the front completely corroded with, uh, with salt water and, and coolant ruptured, and it was just a complete mess. It looked like literally lasagna underneath mm. there. Now, the good thing is, and this is kind of what saved me money in the end, but as I went through the, the pack more and more, there are uh, 16 individual battery bricks well, clusters of batteries in the uh, in the Tesla battery pack, but only four of them were were destroyed. So the car was in water at somewhat of an angle like this. So everything from the front of the car was destroyed, but the back of the battery pack itself, those modules were still good. And I'm sure that those brought really decent money. They did. Those. Yeah. So once once I sold those, it brought the price down significantly. So between the motor. Between selling the extra modules I didn't need, 
and selling the motor that was uh, completely fried, I assume, I probably got that shell for free. When you originally bought Dolores, did you know that soon after was going to come the car that has no name, the car that you eventually pulled all the parts off of to swap onto Dolores? So in one of my videos, uh, someone actually told me to name it Slim Shady because mm. it was white. <laughs> um, so, so, so I had no idea that I had to purchase that second car. I thought I was going to be into this car for maybe 15 to 20 grand or so. Maybe put in, you know, another five or six grand into the car and have a running Tesla for 20 grand. That was my, my goal. I said, that'd be perfect. But I think once I started peeling things back, uh, there's another video of me or, or photos of me peeling back the carpet and then just seeing all the corrosion underneath the seats. The seats were so badly corroded that the motors no longer worked. Mm. So I try to, you know, hit, you know, fore and aft and up and down the seats and they wouldn't even move because all the seat motors were seized. So I thought to myself, okay, no big deal. I'll get new seats. It can't be that much money. But as I dug deeper and deeper into the car, it started getting worse and worse from there. You know, there's, a, there's something called the body control module, which controls most of the exterior functions of the car, like the door handles. And um, it's, I peeled that back. I opened up those modules and there was literally like a small fish on the inside of, uh, of, of some of those things. So it was, it was pretty bad. And it was at that point that I realized, you know, I need to do something here. So I called Tesla on the phone and this is where the story gets worse. I called Tesla on the phone, gave him the VIN. I said, Hey guys, I need some help here. I bought this flooded car at salvage. Uh, I need new seats. I need a body control module. Um, and I might need a motor. I'm not really sure what I need just yet. And they said, you know, sir, we regret to inform you that this VIN number is coming back as salvage. We cannot sell you any parts. Have a good day. Let's go back to Slim Shady. How soon after uh, the project started did Slim Shady uh, come into your life? I think once I started bashing my head against the wall with dealing with Tesla and them not willing to sell me parts, I started running some numbers, and this is a really important thing to do even, way before you even buy a salvage car. You have to factor in what's worst case scenario. Let's just say you had to replace everything. How much would it cost? So instead of doing that before, I started doing that after I was already in trouble. And I calculated buying a new drive unit. I calculated purchasing a new motor, a, uh, a new battery pack, and a complete interior. And those prices were so astronomical, it just wasn't cost worthy for me to do that. So um, even getting it from the used market, you know, going on eBay, getting a battery, getting it shipped, and then getting a drive unit, I wasn't sure about compatibility. I wouldn't know. I didn't know what would work where. It I, it was just too unfamiliar for me. But one thing I did know was I knew the car pretty well at this point because I started taking things apart, and I knew that getting uh, the same, a very similar car from a very similar year with the same body style may do the trick. So I determined that with the money that I would have to spend buying individual parts, it's cheaper buying an entirely new car. And I probably purchased that maybe three months in. So probably like, I want to say 60 to 90 days after I got Dolores, I think I bought the second car. So just to remind everybody, Dolores is the car that's completely put back together. So that came about three months later. And I, if I remember correctly, Dolores cost you around whatever the final bid and just rough number. That was about 14 grand for Dolores, right? Correct. Yes. Yep. How, how much was Slim Shady? Slim Shady was about the same. She was about 14.5 or so. Okay, so we've got out of pocket, we're going to round, just use easy round numbers, 30 grand. So we got 30 grand out of pocket, and right. this ends up turning into every person's dream, a Tesla that ends up costing you $6,500. So yeah. I, I'm going to bring up another viewer question here, and that was, I'll preface their question by saying, you swapped every uh, non-working part uh, for working parts from Slim Shady to Dolores, and they want to know what was the most difficult or the most challenging part of the rebuild? Oh, that's a great question. Um, there's two things that were very difficult. One was the battery pack. The battery pack weighs about 
close to 13 to 1400 pounds. And in one of my videos, um, handling that pack itself could take hours. So the, the main struggle was that I didn't have enough room at my home to keep both cars. So one of the cars was kept in a storage yard an hour away from me. The difficult part was I had to manhandle a 13 to 1400 pound battery pack by myself using like a, a come along and a winch, winch it up onto a trailer, drive an hour back to my home and somehow get that 1300 pound battery pack off the trailer by myself using basic tools and wood and pulleys and levers into my garage. So that was, that was pretty difficult. Um, the second most difficult thing was probably the drive unit. Anything that weighs a lot, that's very difficult to maneuver is it's, it, it's always a challenge. The electronics, um, it wasn't that bad. Uh, remarkably electric cars are very simple on the inside. And the reason why it was so easy for me to do was because I have experience removing it from the flood car. So I move from the flood car and then I go to Slim Shady and I say, hey, I remember this. I take it out and I just walk up to the flooded car and put it back in again before I start forgetting things. So now you've got me with a visual. These really heavy parts, do you, you don't happen to have a lift at home, do you? I don't know. It's all my, my regular standard garage. So jack, jack stands, that sort of stuff? Jack and jack stands, yep. I have my setup is I have eight jack stands and two jacks. So was uh, like the I'm assuming because I don't know, but the battery pack sits on, under the is it it goes under the car, right? Is that correct? Yeah, there's a there's a small uh, indentation uh, underneath the floorboards in the car that the battery pack just kind of sits right into. So you've got the car up on jack stands and I'm assuming you're using a jack to raise the battery up to then go ahead and bolt it in place. Is that Right. Again, and you could you could see when I, I recorded all of this because it, it's completely crazy. This is actually a really good, really good talk because when someone says, oh, that sounds really hard. I'm like, yeah, it wasn't that bad. Looking back at the photos and videos that I took when I actually did it, it was pretty hard. Mm -hmm. So if you could imagine this, there's a 1300 pound, 1400 pound battery pack on the ground and lifting that into the car and getting it aligned. Remember, you have to align it. It doesn't just slap in there and you call it a day. Getting it aligned using jacks and jack stands and using blocks of wood to raise the pack even higher and aligning it just right so it meets to the battery uh, connector terminals, it, it, that was pretty daunting. And it's not easy to do if you're you know, a regular Joe Schmo using Harbor Freight tools in your garage. So, I mean, I'm just, I'm picturing how this is going on. And yes, I, the, when you said you're putting it up there, getting it aligned. I could just imagine you start to jack it up and it's off by an inch one way. So you pull it back down and do it all over again. So, okay, we got the idea. After Slim Shady was parted out, you got to remember from, it sounds like the front doors back with most of the body stuff was probably pretty usable. The doors, windows, all that sort of stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, they were. You had 30,000 out of pocket. It turned into... Yeah. $6,500 and one car when you're done. One complete car, $6,500. Sounds like a great deal to me. Yeah. Uh, obviously, it is a great deal, but a lot of hard work as we're discussing went into it. Right. Look, look, at, look at what Rich has uncovered here. A, a, basically, a gold mine. So everybody that's watching it, you're welcome. You can yeah. thank Rich for that. And of yeah. course, we're going to put all of the information to get to Rich's channel in the description box below. Anyway, Rich, I uh, hope that we can do this discussion again. I think there will be an upcoming discussion on your channel soon. Yeah, sure and uh, I, again, appreciate it. And I hope everybody out there definitely checks out Car Guru's channel. Everything you need is in the description box below to get there. And uh, we'll talk to you real soon. All right. Adios. Thank you very much, buddy. If you enjoyed this discussion, be sure to check out the extended version of our interview and hit that like button. Definitely check out Car Guru's YouTube page right in the description box below. And also be sure to comment, tell me what you think about this. Are you interested in building your own Tesla after hearing Rich's story? Thanks a lot for watching this guys. If you have any questions for me, as always, you can contact me using all the information in the description box below and I will catch you very soon.